Welcome back after the tea break. Now, let me take the opportunity to introduce Ms. Neena Deshpande. Madam, may I have your permission to begin? Thank you. Madam has pursued her MSc in Engineering Business Management from University of Warwick, UK. She has also completed Master of Social Work from University of Pune. She is an ISTD passout and has guided projects of ISTD candidates. She is presently working as Associate Vice President HR and Head CSR at Bharat Forge Limited, Pune. She has total 30 years of experience in NGO, in learning and development, different HR initiatives, SCSR and skill development. She has played a key role in developing training and learning culture in the organization and has set up a process of learning initiatives and organized them at different levels to give vertical mobility to the employees. She has also played a key role in the planning implementation and coordination of Billa Institute of Technology and Science Bits Pilani program for the employees of Bharat Forge. She has provided training to over 5,000 employees, designed, implemented, developed curriculum and metrics, assessed needs and prepared training plans and management training process. She has implemented organizational development and leadership program for the high potential employees. She has set up an industrial training institute near Pune, which is considered as a role model for public-private partnership, PPP, and has organized several skill development programs for the rural youth to increase their employability. Also played a significant role as a project head to become an effective industry partner in PPP mode by adopting two more industrial training institutes. She is presently nominated as the co-governor of CII's CSR and Affirmative Action Panel and won the award of 50 most talented CSR leaders from World CSR Congress in Feb 2015. I now request you ma'am to enlighten the batch. Good afternoon. Good afternoon yeah. So first of all, welcome to the world of management, world of managers. Congratulations to you for getting admission in this college and now you will be pursuing your management courses, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a very interesting field. After 30 years of experience, I can certainly tell you highly exciting kind of area, very interesting kind of area and after working 30 years, not a single day I felt that I am doing the same thing. Every day, as HR person, as CSR person, I am interacting with so many people and such interactions are really, really interesting. I am um, not going to talk to you today on management jargons, on management concepts, um, because you have just taken an admission and you will be doing it throughout your course. Today I am going to share with you my experience and today I am also going to tell you that besides management theory, besides management uh, knowledge domain, you need to have different things with you. What are these different things? These different things are your soft skills, your attitude and human aspect that every manager should have while dealing with his clients or her clients. So today I am going to talk to you on human aspects that are required for a good manager, then soft skills that are required for a manager. I have started my career uh, in 1985 with one NGO that is non-governmental organization. At that time I was master of social work and wanted to pursue my career in NGO. Six and a half years I have worked as senior social worker or coordinator in that agency. It was adoption and educational sponsorship kind of agency, adoption of the children dealing with orphan children was the role and helping needy for educational purpose that is educational sponsorship was the program. 
After working six and a half years, when I had joined my present organization, that is Bharat Forge, I have realized that this experience working with NGO was extremely valuable experience. Two things I have learnt and I learnt that there is difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is to feel for the person and empathy is to feel with the person. When we will become managers, when you will become managers, empathy that is to feel with the person is extremely required and I will show you certain slides that all such factors, the kind of attitude we wear, the kind of empathy we have, the kind of human interactions and manpower dealing we have in the organization, it has got 80 percent of importance and only 20 percent that is technical knowledge that helps while moving ahead in the organization. So, first thing I have learned there is difference between sympathy and empathy. Every professional person has to have empathy that is we need to feel with the person. We have to wear his or her shoes and understand where it pinches. Okay. Then second aspect that I have learned while working with NGOs, there is difference between efficiency and there is dif the difference between efficiency and the kind of skills or competencies you have. So, efficiency and effectiveness, these two words, they are different words and effectiveness in the organization is more important than efficiency. What is the meaning of that? See, I have efficiency of running say 25 kilometers in perhaps given time, that is my efficiency. What is my effectiveness? If I do not run in the given direction and achieve the desired results, I am not effective even though I am efficient. So, while working with NGO, while working in the field, I have realized that effectiveness that is result orientation is absolutely important because just having knowledge domain of social work or how to manage thing would not help, but in the field what is required that need to you need to understand. So, these two things I have learned from NGO and had joined Bharat Forge. Bharat Forge perhaps you all uh, must be knowing or may not be knowing that it is the world's largest forging company and we produce automotive components, components that are required for automobiles. After joining Bharat Forge, I have realized my role at that time was just community development officer, but lot many exciting things were happening because it was around 1991 and perhaps during your graduation, you must have read somewhere, you must have studied that 1991 was the year of liberalization, economic liberalization in this country. And due to economic liberalization, industries were changing like anything. Hmm? What was that change? That change was industries that had become more aggressive during this period in the sense that license Raj was not that was abolished and they were given, industries were given good freedom to do their business. So, when I joined Bharat Forge, I could pick up that, that things are changing around me. And today also, if you see that due to globalization, the whole scenario that is economic scenario, social scenario that is really changing. What is this change? Around 1995, the period was such 
that only Maruti car and that to Maruti 800 car was there. And people used to pay on money to purchase that car. Our CMD at that time perhaps told in one of the speeches, please be ready for, for the competition. Things are going to change and there will be different brands in your, at your doorstep and customer, he is going to become a king and he won't remain as God. In the sense, he told us that God can pardon you, but king won't and king will cut your throat if you compromise on the quality and exactly the same thing happened and what was that change of how things are changing that I would like to explain it to you first and then we will consider the other factors that are required to manage the things in the organization. The things were changing as it is shown here that consumer, consumer has become very wise, intelligent buyer. As I have told you that customer, consumer cuts your throat if things are not of quality. Then the whole economy is changing. Uh, you must have seen, you must have rather studied in the papers, newspaper there was news on the channels also that Greece is having very big issue, right? Do you know about it? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what was that issue? That issue was that they had achieved this bankruptcy and the economy has become such that this problem does not remain with Greece. It becomes problem of Europe, it becomes problem of the whole world. And the same thing we had observed during 2008 that when European economy, American economy collapsed, the world economy also collapsed. So, every layer is changing, consumers are changing, the way they are thinking it is changing, economy is changing and economy is interlinked, interconnected as such. Products and markets, they are changing. You must have seen that if you consider mobile, every day there is new model in the market. So, the product life cycle is changing and due to all these changes, the organization where you are going to work, they are also changing. So, while studying your management science as such for two years, you will be getting license to drive, but driving in the organization is again a very different game and for that you need to understand all such factors that is what is happening around. One has to be highly aware about such happenings. So, organizations and people are changing. How they are changing? Because the people who used to work previously in manufacturing setup, since I represent manufacturing setup, I will tell you about manufacturing setup. That uh, workers or employees, they used to be unskilled people, but now the employees who join manufacturing setup, they are highly aware, educated kind of employees and they have higher aspirations. So, the industrial relations, the equations with the employees, they are definitely changing due to all such factors because employees, they are more aware of about their rights, about their aspirations, the way they want vertical mobility in the organization, their ideas are defined ideas. And so, for managers, especially HR managers and for other managers also, the things are slightly difficult to handle because you need to engage your employees very meaningfully with your organization and engaging your employees means you have to take care of their aspirations and the way they want vertical mobility. So, if you consider these four layers are changing, technology in old days 
we used to feel only IT sector every day there is new technology as such. But in manufacturing setup also, the technology is changing like anything. Every day we have new techniques, every day we think about different kind of 3D printing for example, you must have heard about 3D printing that you can exactly make, suppose if you want to make gun, you can exactly make uh, the, uh, the, if you have design you can make the gun. Anything you can produce, anything, uh, any product you can produce with 3D technology nowadays. Hmm? So, technology is changing, regulations that is labor laws are changing, business processes are changing and so the whole uh, scenario has become highly volatile kind of scenario and so managers need to have very different kind of skills besides management domain like planning, organizing, implementing, monitoring, these are, this is management jargon. But besides that, what, whatever, uh, what else you need that I am going to tell you today. So, I represent Bharat Fosh, it is a technologically highly advanced kind of organization. We produce automotive components, but besides automotive components, we have now entered into different sectors like defense, we can produce guns now and uh, just waiting for the orders. Then we are into aerospace, into marine, into oil and gas equipment business and other businesses. So, besides this automotive components, forging means red hot metal you have to press as per the required shape that is what is called forging. And uh, Bharat Forge has got latest technology with us and to adjust to in fact assimilate that technology, we need to take care of our employees because just technology cannot drive you towards success. The people who work in the organizations, the brain behind the technologies, they take you to the excellence and so we have to take all managers, they need to take care of people and understand their aspirations, their emotions and everything. I will just skip this and we will go ahead. Um, see attitude, it is written over there that is you can see in this slide is the most important aspect in anybody's professional career. You can make your life with great attitude or you can just break your life with wrong attitudes. And the knowledge domain we have, the skill level we have, it has got only certain role to play and that is just you can see over there, it is just 15 percent perhaps above the water and the whole iceberg is beneath and this iceberg is our attitudes. The attitudes they decide everything that is the way you perceive things, the way you look at things, the way you look at the problems, it is decided by our attitude. I have got very nice clipping of Harsha Bhogle, who uh, spoke about attitude and that I would definitely like to show it to you. That, and yet you find that excellence is not about talent alone, in fact a major, major part of excellence has nothing to do with talent. And in course of time, once you go beyond a certain level, ability or talent is the most useless virtue to possess. It's what you do with that talent that matters. And that's what he used the word, we can use the word that I love, attitude. Beyond the point, it is attitude that counts for far, 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 far more than talent. Because talent breeds an ego. And talent never solves problems beyond a point. And I was fascinated by something that Sandy Gordon said when we were doing a program together. Because I had seen a lot of young cricketers, extremely talented, who the moment they faced a roadblock did not know what to do because they had never had to struggle to succeed. They always used their talent to succeed. And Vinod Kamal is an example of that. The moment Courtney Walsh bounced him in Bombay, he was 22 years old. Was he? Yeah, he was 22 years old then in 1994, he was 20 years old. 
didn't know what to do, did not play a test match after that. His last test match when he was 22 years old, just did not know how to play the bouncing ball because Stan had solved everything for him before. In the Australian Army, when they are, and this is something that doesn't come from sport, but it's something a sports scientist told me, that when they're building an elite core team, they look at your career record, your track record, and if you've never failed, they don't pick you. They don't pick you because they say, if this man experiences failure, will he know what to do? They pick people who failed and bounced back. And that is where your attitude comes through, that your work ethic and your attitude counts from far, far more than uh, far, far more than talent. I mean, Tendulkar is a prime example. He played 55 games as a 14-year-old without a break. 55 days. He practiced for two hours, play a game, practice two hours, fall asleep on the dining table, and do that 55 days in a row. That attitude. It isn't Tendulkar's talent that's produced 70 hundreds. It's his work ethic. It's his attitude, and more than anything else. Let me read the top. It's his passion to perform, and that counts for far more. The attitude and the passion counts for far, 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 far more than ability. Ability opens the first door. It might open the second door. It's not going to open it. Yeah, sorry. Um, as Harsha Bhogle, he has told that Tendulkar was having very different attitude, and that was perhaps the secret of his success. Whereas Vinod Kamli, he was not a successful cricketer because there was certain attitudinal issue. I will share one example that how we shape up attitudes of our employees. Have you heard the word CSR? What is that? Corporate Social Responsibility. It has become part of Companies Act 2013. Hmm? Section 135 deals with corporate social responsibility. That is the philosophy behind it that every corporate has to contribute towards society. It is giving it back to the society. Hmm? And the law says now that the companies who are big enough, who are earning profit, 5 crores of who has got turnover of 1000 crores, they have to spend 2 percent of their net profit for corporate social responsibility. Uh, so, at Bharat Forge, we have different CSR projects because 2 percent for Bharat Forge is around 14 crores. We engage our employees in CSR activities they have their different groups as such and they work on the project and I was just talking to you discussing with your director that every management student now has to have exposure of CSR corporate social responsibility and it is not just doing something for the project but it is shaping up of attitude that we have to look beyond ourselves we have to think about sustainability of this planet and we have to think about the deprived who have not got chance to develop themselves and this is attitudinal shaping that takes place in the corporates nowadays. I will also share that while interviewing the people, uh, I, I, I used to work as a head HR for one of the Kalyani group companies. And uh, we had to select CEO for the company. Please remember at certain stage your knowledge level that is at senior post the knowledge level of the candidates it is almost at the same level. But then what do we judge while interviewing the candidates? We judge what kind of attitude they have and every manager has to develop that sixth sense to judge the person and attitudes definitely how do they pay, play very good uh, in fact very important role that I will just explain to you further. Your attitude determines your altitude where are you going to go and what height you are going to achieve in your career that is decided 
by your attitude. I just remember reading one story in uh, incidents in uh, Mr. Sharu Ranganekar's book. Mr. Sharu Ranganekar is management guru by the way. Uh, he has become very old now, but he has written several books. In that book, uh, one of the books he has written that I went to Japan for business tour and uh, in Japan at that time there was lot of unemployment. I went to one of the departmental stores and two young girls they were just standing outside departmental store. Their job was just to receive the uh, customers and I have asked the girls that is it not boring standing all the time 8 hours outside departmental store and just receiving the customers. They said no, we are highly educated girls at that time there was unemployment, but our job is extremely important because it is a first contact of the customer with this departmental store and this contact has to be a very pleasant contact. When Sharu Ranganekar came back to Mumbai and there at that time there used to be liftmen to operate the lifts and there were two tall buildings. One of the lift was working, one of the lift was not working, there was long queue. So, Sharu Ranganekar just asked where is the other liftman? Other liftman was sitting under the tree. When Mr. Ranganekar asked him why are you sitting under the tree because there is a big queue for the lift. He said look. I am post graduate, I am MCOM, this is not my job, but still I have to do it. So, whenever I get bored sitting under the tree, I do my job. This is difference between two attitudes, attitude of those girls and attitude of the left man. So, the kind of attitude we have decide our future, our career, our professional growth and everything. This study was made in Harvard University and a study by Harvard University found that when a person gets a job, 85 percent of the time it is because of their attitude and only 15 percent of the time because of how smart they are and how many facts and figures they know. So, at certain level or even at any level attitude plays 85 percent and knowledge domain plays 15 percent. I do not want to say knowledge domain is not important. Unless you have knowledge base, you cannot go ahead, you cannot climb that particular ladder of profession. But the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes. That is what the professor from, from Harvard University said. As I have told you about the attitude, there are other certain personal aspects which are very important besides your management domain or management knowledge as such. And these things are the way you present yourself that is your communication. It is proved by the research that the body language that plays or uh, the communication which is uh, not vocal communication, verbal communication that plays very important role because at work situation 90 percent communication is non-verbal communication and 10 percent communication is verbal communication. So, we have to give extreme importance the body language and the way we present ourselves anywhere, maybe in the college or maybe uh, at corporate level, at organizational level, our dressing that makes a lot of difference. The way the expressions we wear, they are very important. Then the body language, I would just like to tell you certain incidences. I was conducting training program on communication skills. and. I was just explaining them that how non-verbal communication is so important. One of the participants said, Madam I would like to share one incidence. He had just finished his shift, he was manager working as manager 
and he just finished his shift his reliever that is his partner he came they were just discussing something that what happened during the uh, work and now what needs to be done and both of them they went into argumentative kind of mode and while just making argument this particular party uh, this participant he started doing like this because the shirt was not buttoned up so he started doing like this doing like this has got certain meaning right what is that meaning chal dekhta hu kind of meaning that manager he has taken it so ill he went to the boss and the participant was telling me madam believe me that from that day i have stopped wearing full sleeve shirt i wear half sleeve shirt so body language has got great importance one of, one more incidents there was one union leader in one of the reputed organizations in pune he was having big mustache and he was union leader so when new hr manager joined the organization this union leader he just did like this doing like this again is aap apne mustache jo aise karte ho uska matlab kya hai yeah theek hai dekhta hu kind of gesture it is and that hr manager he really got worried that the total ir situation that is industrial relation situation he doesn't seem to be too good then he went on the shop floor and the union leader was the, over there on the shop floor again he did like this and then the manager really got worried he had just discussed it with the ceo and at that time union leader came he explained that i have got big mustache this is my habit please don't take it ill because it is just my habit such kind of body language has got lot of meaning in the organizations one day i remember one gt that is graduate trainee engineer he went on the shop floor and he just kept his foot on the machine and he was trying to get something from the worker who was working on that machine the worker just couldn't explain anything all the time he was little uneasy and then i just asked him what happened he just told me madam uske pair ko dekho mere machine pe pair hai uska see working on the same machine for 20 years machine is just god like for them it is not just a machine for them aur pair rakhna machine pe that's he has taken it so ill that uska kuch dhyan hi nahi tha wo kya bol raha tha this is how body language is very very important even sometimes it we just avoid looking at each other while speaking that is also taken not in good sense when do you lose your eye contact when do you lose your eye contact when you are not speaking truth when you want to avoid something yeah when you want to ignore someone so this is all connected with negative things not having proper eye contact and in the organization all such things are observed very very carefully yesterday we had new batch of graduate trainee engineers i have placed all the candidates in different departments one of the candidate he came back because the manager just phoned me and told me i don't want this candidate i said but why no somehow i am i feel i am not very comfortable in the first interaction so i had called gt because gt is again they are freshers they don't understand that how uh, communication goes on in the organization and then i realized he was having very arrogant kind of body language that is 
ok, then you can put me into design, he said. I said, put me into design means what? Have you got that kind of skill with you? So, all such things, they matter in the organization and body language is part of your communication, very important part of communication. So, while moving in the college also, while dealing with your professors, the way you stand, the way you speak, the way your voice modulation is, these all such things, they are extremely important. Three things, they are inner things of your personality. I was telling you about attitude. And one incidence, I just remember, I'm, I would definitely like to share with you because it changed my whole, the way I used to think. I went to Bangalore just to see one of the training centers and uh, the training center was no doubt beautiful. There was one big picture outside the training center and that big picture was blue sea, then seashore green trees around and there were footprints of two people on the sand. As that seashore went ahead, that is was going ahead and there was stony path, that is rough path and on that path there were footprints of only one person. So, it was very big picture, very beautiful kind of picture. Training manager just asked me, Madam, how will you interpret such kind of picture? I just told him with very general kind of thinking that okay, when things are favorable, when everything is with you, perhaps everybody is there with you because green trees, blue sea, then nice seashore, it indicates that things are so nice and favorable. So, when things are so nice, everybody is with you and when things become difficult, when path becomes stony, perhaps nobody is with you, you have to walk alone on that path. He said, yeah, you are absolutely right, but just try to read whatever is written down and those lines were very, very touchy. Those lines were one person complains to God. Lord, when things were favorable, when things were really good, when money was there, fame was there, everybody was with me, that is my family members, they were with me, my friends were with me, all other people, God you also, you were with me. But when things became difficult, when nothing remained with me, no money, no fame, nothing. Others, they have left me, that is my friends, my family members, but oh Lord, you also, God, you also. God replied that, my child, you have not understood. When things were with you, no doubt I was with you, but when your path became difficult, those footprints on the path, they belong to me, you were in my hands, I was carrying you all the time. So, when difficulties, they strike you in the life, the way you perceive these difficulties, it all depends on the way you think and the way you think all depends on your attitude as such. You must have heard very good examples like Dhirubhai Ambani and Edison that in very difficult period, the way they strive hard and the way they were dreaming, that shows the kind of attitude you wear. Your knowledge and your skills, they are inner part of your personality and all such things, why they are important, that are also I will tell you. Skills, you must have heard the book, Seven Good Habits of Highly Successful People. There is one story in that book and uh, that story was one woodcutter, he was working with the owner and 
with great sincerity he used to cut payu trees every month the owner got more work more orders and he uh, he had appointed second wood cutter second wood cutter was young dynamic and very active kind of person he learned it so fast that in the first month he started cutting three trees in the second month four trees and third month five trees and with this speed in next five months seven trees every month the owner was happy and then he realized that the old wood cutter he has become lazy his performance is going down and he called that old wood cutter and said that look your performance is not up to the mark you need to improve your performance otherwise you will have to leave the job old wood cutter who was very sincere kind of person he really felt bad and he went to the new wood cutter young wood cutter and he asked him what is the secret of your success the young wood cutter said instead of answering your question i'll just ask you one question and that question is aapke jo tool hai hmm aapka jo tool hai usko aap har roz sharpening karte ho ya nahi karte ho so jis tool se aap cut kar rahe ho usko sharpening karna that is sharpening your skills all the time as i have told you that you get license to drive when you complete your management course but driving means learning every day new skill to manage your people you need to understand your people very well you need to take care the way you communicate the way your body language is and every day you need to enhance your soft skills as well as technical skills because most of the time our experience is that people complete their graduation post graduation 20 years ago 15 years ago and then they feel that they are engineers they are trained managers they have completed their mba and they know probably everything but the things are changing very fast change is the only permanent thing in the organization believe me we work on certain projects previous day and next day sometimes we come to know that project we are not going to implement at that time without getting discouraged we have to start preparing for the next project and change requires the change in your mindset and change in your mindset means enhancing your skills your knowledge every day so this is about skills knowledge and attitude how they are important because they make a they make your personality they if these three things they are in place the way you communicate to your customers to your clients for hr employees are the clients for marketing your customers are your clients so the way you communicate it changes with these three things and so these three things they are extremely important in the organization and you never get a second chance to make your first impression that is absolutely true two more things i would like to talk to you that is innovation and passion just imagine very old organ bharat forge is very old organization we have started around 1961 and production started 1967 we were just into automotive components and there is one concept like organizational life cycle that organizations they grow like any other living organism so there is growth stage 
and then there is a stage where organiz uh, organization practically achieves everything and then the graph comes down like this it is u kind of curve so instead of coming down if organizations they take care at the peak when they are at the top organizations uh, start different life cycle as such and they don't come down in case of bharat posh we have achieved the position that we are the largest company uh, forging company in the world so after achieving this position at the top after becoming so big that is 5000 plus people they work at uh, pune plant and total people are 10000 people so when organizations become so big they become like an elephant very lethargic kind of organization and so at that point we have to start another life cycle and how it will start because if products are same ideas are same nothing will move and so innovation has become key word in our days in any kind of organization you have to innovate as an employee all the time as hr person i have no liberty to say that okay i have completed my hr education around 1997 1998 no i don't have that liberty i have to have innovations every day in my field just but innovations they are not that easy why they are not easy just would like to give you one example that i always give it to my employees this was an experiment that was done by social scientist as such five monkeys were there in a room and there was a ladder and bananas they were kept on the ladder so what is the natural tendency of the monkey to climb the ladder and eat banana one of the monkeys perhaps he did it and the other monkeys at that time got cold shower what is the meaning of cold shower it is kind of punishment they got that one monkey went up to eat banana and so other monkeys they got cold shower means they got punishment after a while every time a monkey went up the ladder the others bit up the one on the ladder why because others were getting cold shower and punishment so the monkey who used to climb that ladder other monkeys they started beating him after some time no monkey dare to go up the ladder regardless of the temptation bananas to dikh rahe the lekin they didn't want to climb because maar padti thi scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys the first thing this new monkey did was to naturally go up to the go up the ladder to eat bananas because this new monkey was not knowing anything about beating of the first thing this new monkey did was to go up the ladder immediately the other monkeys beat him up why they beat him up because they thought they will again get punishment after several beatings the new member learned not to climb that ladder even though never knew why because other monkeys were not getting punishment but with the idea that we will get punishment they started beating this new monkey a second monkey was substituted and the same occurred the first monkey participated on the beating for the second monkey a third monkey was changed and the same was repeated pure paancho hi monkeys badal gaye at that time they were not getting any sort of punishment but the old monkeys they have taught them not to climb ladder and even new monkeys 
they have also started beating the fourth was substituted and the beating was repeated and finally the five monkeys they were replaced and what was left was a group of five monkeys that even though never received any cold shower as such continued to beat up any other monkey who tried to do so if it was possible to ask the monkeys why they would beat up all those who attempted to go up the ladder i bet you the answer would be i don't know that is how things are done around here and this is believe me this is very common answer in the organizations that why are you doing so when such particular way is available to you new way is available to you the answer many a times is we don't know this is how we have been doing it since years and that is what is it is hindrance for the innovation in the organization so we all the time need to think out of box unless every employee every manager thinks out of box the organizations will never grow because believe me in today's world in the globalization process the competition is very tough competition it is not only when it is at organizational level it is at employee level also how much do you contribute instead of playing your task what role do you play in the organization is going to be more important and for playing role in the organization as a professional person we have to have very good innovative kind of approach we have to train ourselves to be innovative and this famous sentence of albert einstein you must have heard shiv khera's name yeah you can win is his famous book uh on the first page of his book just see what is written he writes winners don't do different things winners don't do different things they do the same things differently and to do the same things differently your thinking process your thought process has to be different and for that you have to as i have told you need to have very positive attitude first and second you have to you should train yourself to think differently on different aspects we should not behave like those monkeys that okay we are going to get punishment for certain things and we are not allowed to think in this way never do that okay and to think differently again lot of awareness is required what is going on out, outside all the managers you are budding you are uh, budding managers as such your uh, education process will start at, and soon that is after 2 years you will be full as full fledged managers you will be joining the organizations so the way you think is absolutely important and that is what is judged when we conduct interviews okay and the very important thing that is passion what is passion anyone knows what is passion have you heard the word passion yeah what is that passion what is passion excitement excitement yes yeah please determination to do something determination to do something yeah anything else excitement determination to do something what else yeah love for work yes dedication yes commitment yeah true will power yes yes 
passion is fire in the belly you must have heard na fire in the belly that is what is passion is when one high jumper he was asked that how did you manage to break the record he played in the olympic and uh, his record was exceptional kind of record and he was interviewed and he was asked that how did you manage this he said i threw my heart i threw my heart beyond the bar and my body followed i threw my heart beyond the bar and my body followed that was his statement so passion is fire in the belly passion is commitment passion is will whatever you have told everything together is passion and unless you have passion for your studies unless you have passion for your job no excellence can be achieved if you have to achieve excellence there has to be a passion you take any example of any industrialist the kind of passion they have for example mr kalyani he is our cmd chairman baba kalyani he is 65 plus but the kind of passion he has he comes every day at 8:30 in the organization he goes to the shop floor and believe me he just hears the voice of the machine and he tells wo wahan ka zara tight karo ek kaun sa bhi part kuch ye hua hota to so that kind of commitment is passion the kind of innovation he believes we have started making guns believe me that indian organization we should feel really proud that we have started producing guns it is because of that passionate leader that we have visionary leader we have we designed gun in the organization within one year and we have started producing it just waiting for the orders now so this kind of excellence cannot be achieved without passion so whatever you do you do it by your heart unless you do it with this inner thing nothing can be achieved to that level at the level of excellence okay and the most important thing that is teamwork teamwork is the key in today's world it is good to be indi at individual level, level brilliant but unless you harness each other's capabilities harness each other's skills competencies you cannot achieve excellence together everyone they have to achieve more so to achieve synergy synergy is the word for that synergy means 1 plus 1 is never 2 1 plus 1 is more than 11 all the time and that comes through team spirit whether you are student whether you are employee it doesn't matter but the kind of passion you have the kind of sincerity you have and the way you believe in team work that will take you on the right path as i have told you that only academically brilliant students sometimes we don't appoint we always see whether he is a good team member whether he is a good team leader whether he has that human aspect and there are different ways to test such kind of things after talking to you for 5 minutes we realize that how your personality built up is hmm? we need not even conduct psychometric testing or test also so team work is absolutely important whether you are in the college whether you are in the organization and i would just like to give you what is the essence of team work it's a short clipping again
as teamwork is important i would just like to tell you one thing that when i'm looking at your faces because you have to keep eye contact while talking to anyone some of you you are looking really tired and it's very very natural hmm? uh sitting at one place going through so many lectures and uh, that to sometimes okay not so good kind of lectures is not a not an easy process as such uh when we get fresh engineers in the organization first one week to be, to be in the organization for 8 hours is such a difficult thing for them they get tired they come to training center and literally fall asleep it's so difficult to be in the organization for 8 hours management education i believe since we have gone through it you won't believe uh, 2009 i have realized that things are really changing in the organization and as hr person when we call that we are strategic partner we should know the technology i realized just hr education is not enough for me and so decided to do my post graduation with warwick university and that too msc in engineering business management where four papers four modules they were technical modules and technical modules means manufacturing process technology was one of the modules and it was such a great change for me that routine itself that going through the studies going through the practicals on the shop floor and uh, learning about technical things but i told myself that age should not be the barrier organization needs that hr has to have this kind of angle i have to go through this hard process and four technical modules one module on financial analysis for hr person financial analysis and logistic these are difficult modules to handle but i am not telling you that what i have achieved uh, that i don't want to tell you but when you start something new you have started your management education it is hard thing it's not that easy that training is really hard because your colleges directors they really feel that the product that will come out of from my institute it should be absolutely ready to use kind of hey, that you should be productive right from your first day when you will enter the organization and so the training is hard but for that you have to you have to change your mindset and please teach yourself that certain things will be difficult for you as you are sitting whole day for four days going through different lectures going through different thought process and i i know that uh, you have not started management concepts yet so whatever speakers are speaking to you who have just spent their lives in the organization perhaps speaking difficult language perhaps speaking difficult concepts with you but please tell yourself now you have to be absolutely on your toes whatever you will get try to absorb it hmm? because age is no barrier then other factors should not be barrier to gain any kind of knowledge as such increase your awareness hmm? and be open to everything because many a times oh i don't like that that kind of attitude perhaps is not very favorable kind of attitude so be open to everything and i wish you all the best for your future it is such a nice experience going through management education and then joining the organization believe me not a single day i felt that i am doing the same thing it is so exciting field ahead okay thank you